you so very much yes, for your time. It's been my pleasure. Now I am with Mary Kate, and I am really excited to interview Mary Kate because I know how it is impo how important it is to Newcastle County County Exec Thomas P. Gordon that we really diversify the Newcastle County. And so to have a female be a part of the paramedics class is so awesome to me. So welcome. Thank you, ma'am. How are you doing today? Very well, ma'am. Good. So what made you decide to be a paramedic? Well, I've always wanted, I've always been interested in the medical field. Um, I've always wanted to, to have a job where I can help people and be very active um, with people and just interact with them on a daily basis and help them in any way that I can. And um, I've always been interested in a career that had a little bit of an element of stress involved. Um, oh wait, you want to be stressed. <laughs> yes ma'am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely one of those that performs better under stress and this just has everything that I could ever want in a career and it's definitely my dream job dream job hands down. Okay. Well, I, I, I know like um, during class is very, I see it's very strenuous and one thing that I noticed that was brought to my attention that when you all had to drop to do push-ups, you didn't do your push-ups like everyone else. You did yours a little bit different. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Uh, it's just a, a way to work the different muscles rather than uh, the ones on the shoulder. Um, if you do a whole bunch in a row, put strain on those muscles, so it just changes up the muscle groups. Okay. That Is that, was that a little harder than than the, the normal way that everyone else was doing it? Um, not necessarily, no. Just depends on the person, really. <laughs> okay. All right. So during class, what has been the most interesting um, thing that you've been taught so far? For me, um, I would definitely say just being out in the clinical uh, f field aspect of it um, has been extremely interesting. Um, I didn't expect to be so involved in the hospitals. So to see how all the hospital systems work and things like that have, has really been um, an awesome experience and to get all to meet all the different levels of people, doctors, uh, nurses, all that and really be involved with them and start you know making familiar faces and things like that has been extremely interesting and I never expected that out of a paramedic um, program. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I mean you, you mentioned stress and, and with stress comes pressure so there's a 911 call. The first person that goes out are the paramedics. So you have the task of, I mean, this is a huge task that, that you're about to take on because you could be that, that one person that determines whether that person is going to live or die. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And uh, like I said before, being under that pressure um, is something that uh, I perform much better under, um, something that I've always uh, just seems like it, it works for me and this is the perfect field and I'm excited to, to have that responsibility and um, you know people open up their homes and, and have these really intimate moments that they allow you to be involved in which is mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. Uh, so I'm excited to, to go do this job in Newcastle County definitely. Well thank you so very much. <laughs> is there anything that you would like to say to the female audience that's watching them that says oh they think that's you know up you see more men doing um, paramedics more than you do see females. So what would you say to encourage a young lady that's watching um, today that is debating on what they what career route they want to go? What would you say to encourage them to be a part of Newcastle County paramedics? It's interesting that you say that. Um, I've always been uh, very involved in ice hockey, um, extremely involved, and uh, I've always played around uh, men's teams and boys teams and uh, so being in an environment like this uh, is no different um, than what I was like growing up and just go for it. Don't worry about what other people have to say and be confident in what you're doing. Be confident that you want to do it and don't let anybody else get you down for it. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you ma'am. All right. Now I am here with Deron. Deron, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good. I'm wonderful. Thank you. Tell our viewing audience what made you decide to want to become a paramedic. Honestly, I didn't choose this. Um, I'm military. I'm military seven years. I got from my deployment. Seven years? Yep, been in seven years. Okay. Came up where I thought it was a police uh, interview. Mm -hmm. It was not. Drove up there, went for a seminar. I actually stayed there. I'm like, I'm not going to drive back. Stay, listen to it. I like everything that was going on. I applied and they kept calling me back. That's the honest and kind of truth of why I'm here. 
and I'm really thankful that I actually did it. See, and, and I always say that everything happens for a reason. That's so right. there's a reason why that you went to the interview for the paramedics. The end result is going to be great yes, um, as a result of you becoming a paramedic. Yes, ma'am. Now, the one thing that I admire about you is that you're a young man. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the media depicts young men, um, especially African American men, as not always doing positive things in the community. Mm -hmm. So now our viewing audience and others get to see. Um, a young man in action mm -hmm. doing great things. So I want to appreciate you for being a positive role model um, you. to younger generations. Thank you. You're welcome. So y your family, I mm -hmm. mean, they thought you were going to become a police officer. Yes, they did. So how, how was that reaction when you said, oh, by the um, way, I'm not going to be a, Yeah. Well, my mother's ill. She has RSD. Okay. So she actually was happy. She was extremely happy. That is for now, what's RSD for our viewing audience? They say it's reflex syndrome disorder. Um, the neurons in your body basically are on fire. Like you feel like you're on fire every wow. time it's constant pain. You have swelling, you really can't walk without a walker or a cane. And she's been doing, dealing with that for about 10 years now. So she couldn't be the mother that she wanted to be okay. physically, but spiritually she's always there and did everything for me. So okay. she was extremely happy. My dad is a uh, retired military guy, so he was all about the cops at first, but <laughs> he rose with the punches. Yeah, so I mean, going back to what I just said, nothing just happened so your mom has an illness mm -hmm. and you'll be able to take care of your mom because that's what life is all about yes, it's like the circle of life yes ma'am yeah so um in this class what has been the most interesting thing that you've learned so far in this class mm -hmm. um the heart and also people's personality also the knowing you can get people from all walks of life we have people in the class 20 years in military we have people from the emt people that were just social workers. We have your we military folks putting us into a room and asking us to do accomplish one goal and I don't know you from nothing. Right. That was probably the most I've learned to deal with people and actually ex experience life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. So this class is going to also help you just based on what you share. It's going to help you when 911 gets a call mm -hmm. and sends you out. You never know whose home you're going to go into, mm -hmm. what's the dynamics of the home. So you'll be, fr from this training, you're going to learn to to handle any situation that comes your way. Yes, ma'am. Like, <clears throat> for instance, we do scenarios, but just being in the atmosphere with different people, mm -hmm. you get to see different responses of how people talk, how people mm -hmm. live at home. So when I go to a call, I'm not just focused on one particular set of people, I'm mm -hmm. actually everyone. Right. So, it's actually a really good experience. Okay, great. So as I've done um, the last interviews, I'm going to ask you to do the same if you don't mind. Sure. I want you to look in that camera okay. and talk to a young man who may be struggling right now, not knowing what to do um, in life. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them to inspire them to be um, a paramedic? Okay. Um, I grew up in Dover, Delaware, South Queen Street. It's not the best place in the world. Um, I had good parents, but also, like you said, my mother was ill, could not provide for me. I hate that people use that as an excuse. You can become anything you want, you can do anything you desire. As long as your worth ethic is there and your faith is there, that you can accomplish anything. Me being an African-American male, I understand that this day and time, it's not the typical thing to see us doing positive things, but in all honesty, it's a lot more people out here than just me that can do these things, and you can do it too. That was awesome. Yes, ma'am. And it brought like a tear to my eye. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I appreciate no it. Yes, ma'am. All right.